Shafali Medihim more than a conqueror. Now, what a great revelation in our lives. If there is no test, there will be no testimony. If there is no fight, there will be no victory. If there is no opposition, there will be no conqueror. If there is no battle and no warfare, there will be no conquering. You see, there are many people. I want to be more than a conqueror, but to fear challenges. I want to be more than a conqueror, but to fear the good fight of faith. I want to be more than a conqueror, but to fear persecution and opposition. If there is no test, no trial, no trouble, there will be no testimony. If there is no conflict, if there is no opposition, if there is no persecution, if there is no challenge, if there is no difficulty, how will you be a conqueror? What made David to be a conqueror? More than a conqueror is that he had combatants that fought against him. And what will make you a conqueror in your life, more than a conqueror in your life, more than people that have the ordinary level victory is the conflict, the battle, the warfare, the stronghold, the challenge that come against you. Point number two, the combatants against unconquerable David. For Samuel chapter 17, in for Samuel chapter 17, verse 4, and there went out a champion of the camp of, of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a spear, a span. Was height was six cubits and a span. Here we meet the champion from the enemy camp. And you ask yourself the first question. Did Goliath know David? No. Was Goliath really after David? No. Goliath was representing the Philistines. And the Philistines were after Israel. The Philistines were after the nation. And the Philistines were after Saul. They knew Saul. They didn't know David. The Philistines knew Israel. They didn't know David. And so, when David came out, Goliath was fighting against him, not because of a personal quarrel, a personal conflict, a personal battle, a personal challenge. He was fighting him because he represented the nation. Satan is not really after you. As an individual, it's after the church, it's after Christ, but he cannot fight Christ. Christ is seated on the right hand of majesty on high. Christ is seated down on the throne of authority and power, highly exalted above principalities and powers. And therefore Satan really is against the church, the Israel of God. And you happen to be a follower of Christ, a representative of the church. And it's because you have a part in the church. It's because of your place, your position in the church. That's why Satan is after you. Ordinarily, he wouldn't bother you. Ordinarily, Goliath confront will not bother David. But because of who he was standing for, he was standing for God. I found a man after my heart. He was standing for Israel. Choose you a man that will fight against me. If I overcome him, then you will be our slaves, our servants. If he can overcome us, then we will be your slave. That's the challenge today. The battle line is drawn. And the devil wants to fight against your life. But you know, if you do not understand, if you do not know who your enemy is, you'll be fighting shadows. You'll spend all your ammunition 
all your strength, all your ability, your waste, your anointing. If you are fighting the wrong enemy, now you have seen here in verse 4 that Goliath was a champion of the Philistines. You don't have Philistines there. Neither do you have the same Goliath of that age, of that time, of that era, of that epoch, right now. Who then is a Goliath today? To answer that question, you ask yourself, what did Goliath want to do to David? He wanted to kill him. What is the thing today that wants to kill you? That's the Goliath. What did Goliath want to do to David? He wanted to give his flesh to the birds of the air. What is it today that wants to give your life to the birds of the air? I mean to the demons and the evil spirits. That's the challenge. That's what you are going to find out. What did Goliath want to do? He wanted to defeat David. So as to show Israel that Israel cannot stand, that the nation cannot stand. What, what is it today that wants to defeat your life to show to the world that the church does not have the power, the purity that the church is claiming to have? That's what you find out. That is the Goliath today that we're fighting against and we're going to win. We're going to overcome in Jesus' name. In fact, it says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. With him is the arm of flesh, and with us is our God, and he will give us the victory. Now, as we find out the Goliath of today, I'm going to spell that word Goliath for you. Why don't you spell it for me? Won't you go? How many letters? How many letters? Seven. G for greed. You see, if there is anything that wants to destroy us today, it's greed. Many people don't understand. They go ask today, you know, we stand up. And then we're fighting against this, against that. Before you pray and before you fight, what is it today that wants to destroy our Christian life? What is it today that wants to make us fall? What is it today that wants to destroy us spiritually, physically, and in every way? And what is it today that wants to destroy our service for the Lord? Breach. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9 and verse 10. For they that will be rich, those who are greedy, greedy of gain, for they that will be rich, fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and not fully lost, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. If greed destroys you, if the love of money gets the better part of your life, if greed running after money makes you to deviate from the will of God and from the word of God, Goliath has conquered you already. Now, oh, that is oppression. You see, oppression, and you find it everywhere. And that oppression is another, is the good art of today. It's like that in every office. It's like that in every community. Oppression, oppression. What does oppression do? Oppression destroys us if we do not know how to conquer Goliath. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. If you're looking for a literal Goliath today, you won't find. 
If you say, I am ready, I'm going to fight Goliath. You will not find the Goliath we found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. But the oppression you'll find almost in every, in every locality. In, you know, in the house where you are living as a tenant, the oppression is there. In the office where you are working, the oppression is there. In the place where you are schooling, the oppression is there. And they will try to conquer you with oppression. You wait there and be asking for promotion and you don't submit to this. They'll oppress you. And if you don't know how to conquer Goliath, that oppression will conquer you. And uh, even, you know, among the people that call themselves Christians, they will try to oppress you so as to be able to crush your spirit and to destroy your soul and then to be able to nullify your consecration, oppression. Oppression, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. You'll be eventually, when the oppression comes to his heart, you'll be acting as a mad man or a mad woman. And then they'll be laughing at you. They are the people that caused that sort of temporary madness. But they'll be laughing at you because they know it is their oppression that is turning you to another thing. And then they'll be saying, but you said you can pray, but you said you can stand, but you said you are consecrated. Oppression, that's the goal today, but we shall conquer in Jesus' name. What's the next letter? That's Lucifer. L. Lucifer. You know sometimes, Lucifer himself will come. He'll say, my messengers are not doing it right. My messengers are not dealing with you hard and tough enough. And therefore, Lucifer will come. That's the Goliath for today. The Goliath of 1 Samuel chapter 17 is God. It's dead. But another Goliath is rising up today. It's the champion. Of the, and the principality of the principalities of the power of the air, it will try to challenge your life. In, in uh, Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. In Isaiah chapter 14, reading from verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Lucifer will fall in your life, Satan will fall in your life. You know, this morning I'm so happy because wherever Satan comes against your life, wherever that Lucifer comes against your life, you will overcome. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 18, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan Lucifer as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Give me a good amen. In Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And the God of peace shall. The God of peace shall bruise Satan. Under your feet, shortly it will happen. I said it will happen. First John chapter four. First John chapter four, verse four. In first John chapter four, verse four. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. We will overcome them because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. And then I come to I, that's infirmity. In Luke chapter 13, verse 11. Luke 13, verse 11. It tells us, And behold, there was a certain woman which had a spirit of infirmity. There was a certain woman which had a spirit of infirmity. You know, that's the Goliath of today. The Goliath of today. Infirmity. And sometimes, you know, people don't even worry sometimes because of this kind of infirmity. Would you look up here? There are two kinds of sicknesses. There is what we call horizontal sickness. Horizontal, horizontal is a line that you draw that is going from left to right, that is going from west to east, that is lying down. 
there is a vertical sickness and the vertical sicknesses are more, are more in number than the horizontal sicknesses let me explain to you there are some few sicknesses that will make you lie down you are bedridden that's horizontal sickness and you cannot eat for yourself by yourself and you cannot do anything by yourself that's the horizontal sickness but you see the other sicknesses which are very very serious that's the vertical sickness you might still be standing you might still be walking about but you are seeing infirmity you see this woman she had a spirit of infirmity what kind of sickness is that vertical sickness it was serious but she could, she could still come out jesus didn't go to her house she was still able to come out of the house but for 80 years vertical sickness do you remember that woman with the issue of blood 12 years vertical sickness and you know she was still able to move about that's how she came to the crowd vertical sickness do you remember Bartimaeus? Bartimaeus had vertical sickness. She, he was blind, but he could come out of the house and go to the side of the road and be begging. And when she, he heard that Jesus was passing by, he got up and he followed after, have mercy on me, thou son of David. I want to receive my sight. Vertical sickness. You know the people that have also vertical sickness? Even the first stage of cancer, you might see me walking about, I'm feeling the pain here, I'm feeling the pain there, but you can sickness, you're still walking about, you're still functional, in a way, go to school, go to the market, go to the office, but that thing is very serious, and some people don't care about the vertical sicknesses until the sicknesses become so serious and they're lying down and it becomes an horizontal sickness a spirit of infirmity that's now in verse 11 80 years and was bowed together and she could no wise lift up herself and when jesus saw her he called her to him and said unto a woman, Thou art loose from thine infirmity. And in verse 13, And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and glorified God. G for grief, O for oppression, L for Lucifer, I for infirmity, A for abominations. Abominations. You're asking yourself, what is destroying many people today? What's destroying their future? Abominations. In Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. After the abominations of those nations, there shall not be found among you any, anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Or that